Hi guys, welcome to Everything Blockchain. User interaction on the web today is predicated upon proving one's identity. Whether you're trying to shop online or log into your social media account, you gotta sign up with your email, username, password. Basically, you're required to share your identity and when you grant access, you're essentially allowing traditional identity management systems to store your data. All of your information as such is housed in siloed databases, creating a single point of failure. These databases can be compromised through security breaches or centralized attacks. Data tampering, privacy breaches, cyber attacks are super common in the space, raising concerns over the integrity of these systems. And then we have Web3 with its promise of a future where decentralization is built into the architecture and control is returned from tech behemoths to the rightful owners, that is us, the users. And this is where decentralized identities or self-sovereign identities come into the picture. And in today's video, I'm going to be giving you a high level overview of decentralized identity. The fundamental purpose of a decentralized identity is to give users control over their own data. So you get the user-friendly convenience of Web2, coupled with the perks of decentralization thanks to Web3. A decentralized identity essentially replaces password-based logins with decentralized authentication, allowing for greater control and privacy. It's a form of digital identity based on verifiable credentials and DIDs that are decentralized identifiers. Don't worry, in my next video, I will elaborate on all of this. But for now, let's understand decentralized identity with the help of an example. So let's say John has applied for a job in firm XYZ. XYZ requests his educational qualification certificate. Now in Web2, this would entail sharing the soft copy of the original certificate and then XYZ corroborating its authenticity with the issuing authority. For the sake of the example, let's call it University ABC. However, with Web3 and decentralized identity, the University ABC simply issues the educational qualification certificate that belongs to John. So ABC is the issuer and John is the holder. Now, John holds this certificate in his digital wallet, giving him complete access over his credentials. The firm XYZ is the verifier as the certificate presented by John needs to be authenticated. So XYZ will simply send a request to John for accessing this certificate. And since John has this information in his wallet, he can grant XYZ access to view the required information. The verifier as in XYZ can cryptographically check the authenticity of the credential Blockchain actually serves as a verifiable data registry and provides the very mechanism for the identity creation and operation. In my next video, I'll cover the elements that make up a decentralized identity. But for now, you should understand that decentralized identity gives you the option of sharing only the information necessary to verify identity rather than giving broad access to personal information. Let's say you're going to buy liquor at a store and you need to present your ID as proof of age. When you present your ID, you end up disclosing other details like your name, your address, your photo. All of these things are unnecessary and not required by the store. All they need is a proof of your age. Decentralized identity makes this possible. It makes you the sole controller of your identity. You can revoke access, grant access as per your own wish. Additionally, it eliminates the possibility of tampering and forgery. That's it for now. In my next video, we will talk about the decentralized identifiers or DIDs, verifiable credentials, and how DID leverages blockchain. I'll be back soon. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. Take care. Bye.